In this short video, we'll demonstrate how you can quickly and easily create a simulated OPC UA data source using AWS IoT SiteWise. If you'd like to follow along, all you need is an AWS account and a device running Linux that will act as the OPC UA gateway running the simulator. My name is Chris Green and I'm an IoT Specialist Solutions Architect in the AWS Worldwide Specialist Organization. Here are the high level steps we'll follow. First we'll create an AWS IoT SiteWise gateway and add an OPC UA simulated data source. Next we'll create a SiteWise model and a corresponding asset to collect and view the simulated data. And finally we'll modify the OPC UA simulator data source to explore all of the other useful data sources the simulator provides. Before we dive into the details, let's answer some fundamental questions. Why would I need to simulate data? What is OPC UA? And what are my OPC UA simulation options? So why would I need to simulate data? Well, simulation in software development and testing has been practiced for many decades because it enables development and testing to continue even when hardware or other systems aren't available. For example, perhaps the system being simulated is just too expensive or too dangerous or may not even exist. The key to simulation in software development is to have a known stable interface through which we can interact with the simulated system. If the interface in the simulated system is the same or close enough to the real system, the simulator can be used for development and testing. Because the OPC UA standard is relatively simple and well defined, we can simulate arbitrary equipment data readings while we develop and test our code. These simulated data can be so close to the real thing that they are indistinguishable from real physical system data. Simulating OPC UA data enables us to build and test our end-to-end -end systems with realistic data without disturbing the live production systems such as PLCs, SCADA systems or data historians. I've mentioned OPC UA a few times now, so let's just make sure that we have a common understanding of what that means. OPC UA is a specification for a popular protocol used in industrial automation systems for communications between programmable logic controllers, supervisory control and data acquisition systems, or other industrial systems such as protocol gateways. Today, OPC UA stands for Open Platform Communications Unified Architecture. But historically, OPC was short for OLE Process Control, and OLE is short for Microsoft's Object Linking and Embedding. This older OPC is sometimes referred to as Classic OPC, which was standardized in the mid-1990s by the OPC Foundation. The early specifications included OPC DA, Data Access, the initial specification, OPC AE, Alarms and Events in 1999, OPC HDA, Historical Data Access in 2001, and finally OPC UA, Unified Architecture around 2008, which incorporates all the previous classic specifications for DA, AE, HDA, etc. The latest revision is OPC UA 1.05, released in 2022. You can find the full timeline of OPC UA specifications on the OPC Foundation website. There are a number of end-to-end -end architectural options to consider. We'll take a look at two scenarios. First, and this is the most common, is the standard architecture with no simulator, where the OPC UA data source is a PLC or protocol converter gateway and external to the Greengrass instance. AWS IoT Greengrass is an open source IoT Edge runtime and cloud service that enables you to build, deploy and manage IoT applications on your devices. Software components on Greengrass enable devices to collect and analyse data closer to where the data is generated, react autonomously to local events and communicate securely with other devices on the local network. Greengrass devices can also communicate securely with AWS IoT Core and export IoT data to the AWS cloud. AWS provides a suite of pre-built software components that you can use to connect your Edge devices to AWS services or third-party services. You can also build and run your own software components. You can find links to more information on AWS IoT Greengrass in the notes below. In this architecture, the OPC UA data source is read by the SiteWise OPC UA collector. 
The collector publishes the data that it has read to a data stream and another Greengrass component, the SiteWise Publisher component, reads from that data stream and publishes the results to SiteWise. This is the most common configuration in production in industrial settings. The next architecture to consider is one where we introduce the simulator. This is the architecture that this video demonstration is based on. The main differences are shown in red. Specifically, the OPCUA data source is now the IoT SiteWise OPCUA data source simulator component, which runs in the Greengrass instance, and there is no need for an external OPCUA data source. This is a no-code option for data simulation and it is the architecture that we'll be using for the demonstration in this video. So our first task is to create the AWS IoT SiteWise gateway and to add an OPC UA simulator data source. So here we are in the SiteWise console. We choose gateways and create a gateway. We'll use Greengrass version 2. Let's change the default name that was generated for us into something a little more human readable. And choose next. We now have the option of adding a data processing pack which would enable us to compute metrics and execute transforms at the edge but we won't need that for this demonstration so we'll just choose next. We'll leave the defaults for the publisher settings and choose next. Next we'll choose the data sources. Um, this is optional at this point, but it does make it a little easier if we choose now. We could easily add a data source to our gateway after it has been created, but we'll create the data source now. So our first option is no data source and we could just move on. The most common would be an OPC UA data source where we would um, specify the connection endpoint for our OPC UA server in the real world. And of course, in this video, we're going to be relying on the demo data source. So we'll choose that and we'll accept the remaining default configuration and choose next. We're then presented with a summary page where we can make final edits if necessary before we select generate to create the installer. And we are presented with a friendly reminder that we need to save this installer script so that we can uh, run it manually on the gateway in subsequent steps. Our next step is to download and execute the installer script on the gateway. The installer script will download the device certificates for the new Greengrass IoT thing, install Greengrass on the gateway, configure Greengrass to communicate with IoT Core, install the Greengrass OPC UA data simulator component, and start the Greengrass instance and the simulator on the gateway. So here we are on the gateway. We've uh, copied the installer script to our home directory. We'll add execute permission to that installer script. And you'll notice that we need elevated permissions to run this script. That's because the default installation location for the Greengrass instance is the root directory. And the installer script will also add a Greengrass user and group. Uh, you'll notice also that the installer script has detected that Java is not installed. So it will satisfy that requirement for us by downloading and installing a Java runtime. The last step the installer script will perform is to start Greengrass and we can use the system control system CTL command to check the status of the Greengrass process. Once we've installed Greengrass on the gateway we can come back to our SiteWise console and check the status of the gateway in the console. And we can see that the gateway installation has completed and that the data collection pack has been activated. When we open the gateway details page, we can see that the gateway is connected, but the publisher and data source are not yet active. It may take a minute or two for these to become active. Now that the data source and publisher are active, we can check in the data streams page to see if the data has actually been received by SiteWise. And we can see here that SiteWise has received at least one data point for this tag. If we go back to our gateway configuration and look at the data source, you may recall that we accepted the default node value of integration test reading double. 
This in fact will send a single value 3.14 to SiteWise. We can change that to a more interesting source of data. For example, integration random double which will send a continually changing double value at the rate of once per second. When we save those changes to the gateway configuration, SiteWise will automatically deploy the new configuration to the gateway. And now when we check our data streams, we can see that our new random double has been added to the list of data streams being collected by SiteWise. Use the simple data stream viewer, we can see the data points that have been collected over time. Now that we have our random data flowing, let's add another data source. We'll never go back to the data source page and add another node. This time we'll add an incrementing counter. We save the changes and SiteWise deploys those changes to the gateway. Now we can navigate back to our data streams and we expect to see a third data stream added which is our counter. So now that we've achieved our main goal of creating an OPC UA simulated data source, let's move on and create a model and corresponding asset in SiteWise to consume that data. First, we'll navigate to the Models page in SiteWise and select Create Model. We'll give the model a name. And we'll define a measurement. SiteWise measurements are asset properties that represent a device or equipment's raw sensor time series data streams. They consist of a name, an optional unit of measure, and a data type such as double, boolean, integer, or string. Measurements are associated with incoming data streams, as we will see when we create an asset based on this model. We need to wait for the status of the model to become active. Once the model is active, we can start to create assets based on that model. We navigate to the assets page, choose create asset, select the model, give our asset a name, and select create asset. Now that we have our asset, we can see in the measurements, we have our measurement defined, but we don't have an alias defined, which corresponds to the data stream. So let's navigate back to our data streams page and associate a data stream with our measurement. First we select our data stream and then choose manage data streams. First we select choose measurement and then expand our asset to see the measurements that are available and select the measurement. When we click update, we will now associate the incoming data stream with that measurement in the asset. When we navigate back to the asset page, we can see that the measurement now has an alias defined. And we can also see the incoming values being updated in the page. So we've now implemented our end-to-end -end architecture. We've created a simulated OPC UA data source and we saw the simulated data arrive in SiteWise in a data stream. We created a SiteWise asset and associated a measurement in the asset with a simulated data stream. But before we wrap up, I'd like to show you some of the other data source types that are available with the OPC UA data source simulator. First of all, here are the static data types. 
these data types are constant and will return the same value each time they are read. This double is the default mode that was used when we created our data source simulator. We then added a dynamic data source and used this counter which updated its value once per second. You can view all of the available data sources by updating the node selection in your OPCUA simulator data source. This has the effect of removing all node filtering. When we navigate back to the data streams page, we can now see all of the available data streams. So that concludes the demonstration. We've seen how we can take a no-code approach to creating a versatile simulated OPC UA data stream that we can use for development and testing. You'll find links to more information in the notes below. Thank you for watching.